Yeah. Yep. Everybody okay? Yeah. All right. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, and you can mute now. A little like Wayne's world. Did you hear? Because you're not getting audio yet, maybe? Uh, again, no, I can hear same you. thing again. You got a missing one more connection. That's why we audio test.
Hello, hello. Welcome to the Maleko and Flash podcast on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I'm Maleko. I'm Flash. And uh, today we are broadcasting live from the beautiful Hawaii Convention Center uh, here right on the edge of Waikiki, um, which Gorgeous. is it's, it's a beautiful building. I, you, you don't really get to appreciate it. Gorgeous space. Yeah, a lot of space. We're right here. Actually, we're on the second floor here overlooking the lobby. Beautiful uh, sunshine behind us here. Uh, and it's an important, uh, we're here for a good reason. We're here to talk about events, um, which is something that. Or you, lack thereof. Or lack thereof. <laughs> do, do you remember events, Flash? Do you remember what events were like? <laughs> is, it a, is it a concert if there's more than 10 people? Uh, it's, <laughs> that's just a house party. Is that I like think. a stadium show at this point? <laughs> It's not, but at this point, it is. It's a stadium show. It's, it's a festival. Yeah, yeah. You know, come over to my house and watch some, uh, some Netflix concerts. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been such a, a really strange time for a lot of businesses, and no business has probably been impacted more than the events business. Um, and right when all of this happened, pretty much just every vendor that you can imagine that's connected with events. Well, that's just it. It's not just... Events business per se, right? But all the businesses that and a lot are of consumer ticket holders will think of. Okay, it's the Waikiki Shell. So the Waikiki right. Shell is out of business, or but, maybe the concert promoter. Yeah, maybe the the guy who, right. who who gave you the tickets, or maybe it's the the Republic. But you don't you don't think about is the people who put up the sound and the stage and the lights and the liquor and uh, yeah. the food. Yeah, maybe uh, the marketing company that's been hired. <laughs> by the maybe the marketing company. That sounds personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, you know, there's so many different people that, that were impacted by this. And one of the coolest things that happened at the very beginning of this pandemic is all of those vendors who are typically, it's a fierce competitive space. They hate each other. They hate each other we're day by day. I, I, I compare it to, you know, the Roadrunner and the Wiley Coyote, you know, when they punch in yeah, and they yeah, fight yeah. all day and then they punch yeah. out and then they go get drinks. Well, these guys were like that. They're fierce competitors. But when this all happened and everyone was out of work at the same time, uh, instead of just going off and, and, you know, wallowing in their own sorrow, they got together. And, and they wa wallowed in their own sorrow together? Together. <laughs> and uh, and they, they came up with the Hawaii Events Coalition. And uh, one of those companies that I talked about, Hawaii Stage and Lighting, uh, is responsible for, Major. for Major. most of the shows you've been to in your entire life. If you think about a great concert or a great event or a conference or something that has happened, uh, these guys have, have likely been behind the scenes. And to your point, there really is, I mean, there is a handful of the big lighting companies there's a handful of the big staging companies i mean it's like two or three or fours mm -hmm. it's yep. it's literally just a handful of these companies right and uh I and mean, it's funny if you and talk they all know each other we're gonna talk more I, we, we've done yeah. enough this is the longest intro longest ever intro ever i'd like to introduce you to the vice president of hawaii stage and lighting please give it up for kalani rodriguez kalani rodriguez wow. I don't know where to take it from that. Jeez, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're stoked to have you here, man. Thank you for uh, for agreeing to meet with us and yeah. uh, and talk with us today. we got a lot to talk about. Oh, I'm thrilled, man. It's great to be here. It's great to be around people, not wearing masks. We're all vaccinated, by the way. And, and it's yeah. outside. We're we're all back. We're waxed and back. Ready to go outside. We're, we're doing uh, it, yes. We are legally allowed to not wear a mask. It's we're close. We are close to getting back to uh, where we can have that kind of comfort around more people than just a group of people like we have here, but we're still far away. Yep. Need uh, to be closer. Need to be when when was closer. Hawaii Events Coalition put together? How, how oh, soon that, into the that pandemic? Was after. Um, Oh, around September, I think. It was a while after because we did we, we just started out, we did the um, 50 lights in the sky, the first responders thing. That's, that's right. That's what I call Bob, uh, eggshell lighting. Bob Harmon. The other yeah. big com you know, Bob has been around. He's like an industry icon yeah. in, in yeah. stage lighting, right? He um, even though he looks old, he hasn't aged because he's looked that <laughs> same age for the entire, like, two decades that I've known him. I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about that because Bob has a certain <laughs> thing going on. We're like, <laughs> Bob's the same in every you, picture you've ever seen, and that's uh, kind of awkward. Yeah, a little think strange, a little strange. <laughs> yeah. so, and we, so we're sitting in the front yard, and it was, it was with Carlos. It was Carlos. Yeah, my brother was there. Willie, yeah, and we're, we were uh, talking about, hey, just what's going on, and this really sucks, right? <laughs> There's nothing, we're yeah. all, we're all, he, he was in the film industry, and this is before, not your brother, but Carl Harbottle, who lives up there in Monowilly, and we're all good friends. Of, distance, of course. We're all distance. At of this course, point. yeah. And I said, hey, come up with the idea. Let's, let's, um, let, let's do something. So they said, let's shoot up some lights. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a bunch of these really powerful searchlights. So we, Huge. We decided lights, to yeah. um, 
hand them out to everybody and do a, th- a tribute to first responders. And it just happened to coincide with Earth Day and Hawaii, you know, 50th. Say, everything just tied together, and we did it. So it was pretty cool. Um, so Earth Day is last April 20th-ish, 22nd yeah, or something. So that, that was the first time we, uh, we I, I called Bob and a couple other lighting companies, and we said, hey, yeah, let's do this. So he handed out lights to all our employees and shot these beams up, and it was really cool. We thought, wow, this is cool. So mainly because you guys are just bored and want something yeah. to do. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're all, let's all be bored together. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah, and by doing that, it was great. Everybody got into it, and for, for one night, we were all kind of together into it. And from that came the, um, the red light um, we make events event. Yeah, that followed, followed up, and, and that wound yeah. up being being an even bigger what, bigger presence. Wasn't that like an international thing? The red that light was, thing. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's all across the. Uh, it was all across Europe, and then uh, the United States had their own, which which we did, and that was in the beginning of September. Nice. So that was the, how the events coalition formed. Bob called us, and we got a bunch of different lighting companies, individuals, um, and, and venues like the Hawaii Convention Center. Yeah, we did the Aloha Stadium. We did Blaisdell. You know, different companies did different venues. It it was great to see everybody come together. A lot say, of people hey, coming together. Look at this, man. You know what Events else would be great? Dead in the water. <laughs> Before we go to the step. <laughs> uh, you know what else okay. would be great? <laughs> uh, drinks would be great. So uh, one big staple of the show here is that we always have cocktails. And, of course, uh, we are here at the Hawaii Convention Center. Uh, and we do have a bar cam set up here as we head over to our bartender uh, who's been waiting patiently yes. to make us drinks there. Hi, Helene. How are you? Hello. <laughs> director here at the Hawaii Convention Center. Hi. Yeah, hi. Thank we, you we got very the much. Big, we're bringing out the big guns for Kalani <laughs> today. We, you, we don't just get a bartender. You, you get, get the, the F&B F&B director. Yeah. I love you it. You go yeah. straight to the top here. I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm impressed. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, yeah. you actually, you, you put something special together for us today. I uh, did. I created wise. a specialty cocktail called Ready to Mingle because we're ready to mingle yeah. now. Yeah. And so what it is is In we more use ways local, than one, sister. Right? So I use some local Koloa rum some fresh orange juice, um, guava juice, squeeze some fresh lemons, put it into this cool little adult Capri Sun drink here that we can just, you know, we're ready to mingle. Let's just walk around and mingle with our drinks. So I got this ready for y'all. So did that, uh, is that specifically because you guys do events on the rooftop? Is that how that came about? Or? We do. And then we kind of got closer and closer to this as COVID happened, where all all the drinks need to be contained in one container and easy to carry. We also have our, plus wow. this building is eco-friendly. So this is an eco-sip beverage with some agave straws. Excellent. So we, we don't want to kill the turtles. Wow. Yeah. Delicious. All right. Ready I'm to go. Thrilled. Fantastic. All right. She's going to mix wait. that up for us. Yep. Cannot wait. So when I, um, when I heard about uh, the Hawaii Events Coalition, um, you guys were putting on an event for all the members here at the convention center. Yep. How many organizations are involved, would you say? Can you guess? More than 20? Uh, I mean, major organizations. There's, there's over 300 different members, current, you know, which represent different organizations with the larger lighting companies. And then we, we took in wedding planners also. Because mm-hmm. when you look at that musicians, so there's, there's a huge, so huge many people part of the population, this, yeah. right? And and when you there's there's what, what about you, MCs, Kalani? <laughs> what about MCs? Asking for a friend, <laughs> asking for two friends. Absolutely, <laughs> that would be the vertical markets we refer to. <laughs> enough, you know, from those. It's true, places. though. I mean, but Absolutely. you know, that's uh, you know, it, I mean, my. Oh, take a look at these drinks. Look that, at this. That, does that come with an IV feed? Can I just go straight <laughs> Just to intravenous, just bring it in. There? That is awesome. Thank you so much. Look, she even brought a little uh, We little had enough aperitif. IVs the last time we were here. <laughs> oh. 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 Uh, Too it's soon. A little, it's, you took nine minutes to bring it up. Nine minutes. All right, let's take a sip of this. Where do I, po- where do I pop exciting. this thing? This just is exciting. Oh, look, we got food. Today. Yeah, just open she the top. food. Oh, my God. Wow. All right. So while uh, while we're, we're we're getting this cocktail going here, um, Kalani, we need a word Makes of the day. So, happy. Uh, so basically, uh, every time we say the word today, uh, we're gonna have a sip of our drinks. So uh, depending on how intoxicated we want to get, uh, that's how easy the word is. A word that you come of the up. Day. Yeah. So oh, you, you get to come. Would up. you like a lighting word, a staging word? How about? Uh, yeah, give us a word we don't know. Ellipsoidal. Ellipsoidal. Oh, that is a fantastic word. All right, Boy, we're going to be totally sober by the end of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kalani. <laughs> All right, well, d- oh what my. is an ellipsoidal? What does uh, that mean? How about let's, let's just say, how, let's go, since we're talking about concerts and conventions, let's just say groupie. Groupie. groupie oh, I like that yeah, one. That's even better. Very interesting groupie. on a tangent. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here we go. Lauren, he Alcohol. was totally not referring to you, Lauren. No, not. <laughs> she was. Yeah, I was not. I was referring to you, Flash. Oh. Actually, it was one of the best. Groupie. Groupie. Right. <laughs> so this basically just tastes like wow, uh, like a Capri Sun, and I am ready to have twelve of these. I think it tastes like an uh, like a Hawaiian Sun, like uh, mm-hmm. orange, <laughs> orange passion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you this really is dangerous. You there, really there's not came even out of the park alcohol swinging. in there. <laughs> this is a very, very refreshing, dangerous cocktail. It's very dangerous. So, yeah. Got to keep away from it. Wow. Yeah, this what is, what very, is this called heavy. again? Um, ready to mingle. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Helena. We are ready to mingle. That Fantastic. Appropriate. Appropriate. So we got our, uh, uh, our streams going up right now, by the way. We are up on uh, Facebook, Twitch, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, if you're watching the show right now, uh, type us a comment, type us a message, let us know what you want to know. Oh, yeah. We, you're doing the, the live. We, yeah, we, we did got that last time with Justin for the first time. We got the restream Ask. chat going on here, so we can interact with you. You can interact Ask with us if you got questions. questions in real time. And we do have an audience of one today. Lauren, do we have a, a can we see <laughs> her? Lauren Cam? And and Malie, she's she's just off camera from Malie, uh, our audience of one today. W- wave wave with your right hand so people can see you. No, down this way. Do the, there you go. There, there you it go. is. There Yay. she is. She's right off. True of story. Camera. If you want to be in our audience of one, you can email me at flash at iheartmedia. <laughs> <laughs> dot com and uh, we'll try to take care of everybody. That's also a great place to Audience ask for free one. concert tickets. By the way, Flash. Yeah, listen, I've got Media. all the com. non-existent free concert all tickets that you would shows. like right now. <laughs> <Yes>. Next week, <laughs> yeah. all the canceled show tickets that were printed yes. are in a box in his office. Mm-hmm. So that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, man, that's oh. sad. sad. <laughs> the last time, uh, <laughs> we, we were supposed to do this in March, and uh, back then, very little had, had progressed in the event space. Yep. Um, yep. We had just gotten a new mayor. He was getting his footing. He was trying to figure out what he was going to do. The governor was pretty, uh, pretty stoic on his, his opinion of everything. That's, um, that's one word for it. Yeah, it's a good word. That's a word. It's a good word. Yeah, two it's words. A good for word. It. <laughs> uh, they so, told me I couldn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, tell me there's no censorship <laughs> here, you know. But the 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 idea was that you know the events coalition was look we're going to present an idea of how we do things, and th- when. I think the word at the time was uh, gatherings. There were no gatherings right. allowed. Yeah, social and gatherings because it, it runs yeah. along with social social gatherings, right? Right. Social didn't sound so. We, we coined the phrase structured structured gatherings, right? Yeah. Because if you have industry professionals, right, it's kind of like Mr. Howell and Miss as opposed to Gilligan's. So right. There's social <laughs> gatherings and then there's structured <laughs> events. So we're at the house. And there's a lot of Gilligans out there. Let me tell you. There's a lot of Gilligans. <laughs> yeah, people, you, know, you see them. People are having concerts out. Well, you're like, wait a minute. What yeah. the? Oh, we ask everybody, well, do you have COVID? And they said no. You're like, yeah. what the? Yeah. yeah. That's not yeah, the same. That may or may not be the it. same promoters that were like, listen, they want to see my face. So I <laughs> oh, have to get up on stage and that. take my mask Ouch. off because clearly oh. all these concert goers are here to yeah. see my face, the promoter's face, not so, the artist who's on stage. So the difference between... Uh, a cocktail hour or a party or a concert run by professionals versus a house party with teenagers, you know, who are running amok, right? Yep, yep, so uh, when you said social gathering early on in the pandemic, people just thought that meant everything, concerts yep. and everything. But one of the things that uh, was quickly forgotten is that this is what you do. You're professionals. And what Actual you do is dangerous. <laughs> and there are a million ways that someone can get hurt at any event. And you do everything you can to make these things right. safe. And okay. then you pay a jillion dollars in liability insurance yeah. on top of everything But, I mean, you've else. got safety protocols. Even, <laughs> even before the event happens, you know, lighting guys are up on yeah. rigs and, and massive arrays of speakers that weigh tons are flying above crowds. Uh, there's a lot of very careful planning that goes into an event. And, uh, and it, th- it th- made th- sense when I saw that, well, why can't we just put COVID planning in there? No, and, that, that's and leave exactly. it to the professionals. We, we we have done when you go back and we when we went in front of the mayor's office because we 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 come from an existing culture of safety. We have done so many shows, and it used to be the Wild West, the old days in the rock and roll industry. You've seen Woodstock with people climbing on the scaffolding and falling. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> get me another sound guy. That's, that's that's the way it worked, right? Nobody cares. Like, ah, 
Oh, can you run the sound? Yeah, you're pretty good. Put me good. in, coach. That's the way it works, right? Now, now, I mean, it's it's evolved in such a highly technical, you know, some of these light boards, it looks like the Starship Enterprise, and you've got to know what button to put. It's like, oh, my God, there, there's these, with the moving lights and the advanced, the pyrotechnics and all this stuff you've got to combine. So it became safer, and we, we ended up having OSHA training. We ended up, so we do safety meetings before all these larger shows. We have to take OSHA training. We have to take fall protection training. We have to take, so the guys are already used to having masks for respirators, depending on what situation. Mm-hmm. So COVID was just one more checkbox in that list. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal for us because you've already got to put, you, so the safety meeting, you say, okay, and make sure you have your mask on here and make sure, you know, right. it wasn't and, hard and for us to transition. In addition to that, that side of the safety thing, you've got the concert promoter working with, or the event promoter working with the venue, and there's a huge security checklist, and you need X amount of security for X amount of people, and you need X amount of off-duty officers, and X amount of ENT, EMTs on site, and, you know, X amount of ambulances. And, and X, X amount of groupies, so you know. X- oh! <laughs> So even more so to Kalani's point, you just slide, this is just one more set of parameters that would go into building out a show. It's no extra thing for you. It's just, it's an extra, it's one more step to do. It's doable. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, and, and, but people weren't thinking that. People were thinking baby luau's in your backyard with 200 people. Which apparently that was okay. If you remember, <laughs> I do remember. I do remember, you know, or or uh, potlucks, you know, where you had uh, fifty people gathered at work or something like that. And well, people immediately thought social gatherings meant that, but or concerts, you know, when you think of a festival or something. Yep. Um, but uh, there's a huge industry here in Hawaii that a lot of people probably don't know of or don't care about or ignore, and that is the uh, the destination conventions and events. I mean these. Mm. These uh, uh, massive events that come into the islands that are put on uh, by some large corporations, and they come massive in, they bring a lot, of, money. A lot yeah. of money. I don't think people realize how many events happen here with those groups and how many groups have come through the, the state and then were bought on by a local promoter. I mean, when the Rolling Stones first did the, the state, their stadium show out here uh, Many years back, the Rolling, the Stones were here for Pepsi. By the way, they shout had originally out. come in for the Pepsi show, shout out, and then they shout out to up. Tom Moffat. Yeah, yeah. Tom Moffat, hey, Tom yep. Waikiki yep. Shell renamed after him. Yep. It just became official. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. he's the Rolling Stones guy. Yeah, I got, I got a shout out to Barb Saito, who's uh, with Malia yeah. here on the they're on the uh, Public Relations Commission of the Hawaii Events Coalition. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. They they put our website up, and they've done a great job. I got to tell you, I love Malia. Yeah, Malia is fantastic. And, and, and Barb, who was Tom Moffat's right hand yep. lady, if you yeah. if you recall. So that so, was great to see. So you've got, um, uh, you, you were talking about this. The, the Rolling Stones came into town. A lot of people, they didn't know anything about why they were here. They just thought it's a concert. Like, Rolling Stones are coming to Hawaii, but they were here for Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, how did, th- that happens a lot. Like these a giant lot. bands fly in, mm-hmm. perform for a private group, and then leave, and you didn't even know they were here. I'm, I'm laughing because that's one of my favorite moments in, in the history of doing shows was Mick Jagger was up there, and he says, all these years I've been doing Pepsi. Now I'm doing, co- all these years I've been doing Coke. Now I'm doing Pepsi. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, it's great. That's a brilliant line. <laughs> that is a brilliant line. And typically, uh, because there's like radius clauses, <laughs> if, if wh- wherever the, that big name concert is happening, typically they'd be performing for the private corporate event on a different island even mm-hmm. before yep. they even yep. are allowed to fly and do the show on a different island. That happened with Aerosmith because Aerosmith originally came in, they did the Toyota convention. At, at wasn't the, that at, at Les Morikami? Yeah, Les yeah, Morikami yeah. Field. So we did, we did, that was great because they had Stevie Nicks and in, in, wow. the, um, in the Stan Sheriff Arena, they, Jay Leno was there, and they had the Goo Goo Dolls, and they had the cars came out and spun. It was really great. Oh, that's Jay amazing. Leno, so nice. What a great guy. He walked down the back hallway saying hi to everybody, and it was a really fun show. So the, the, this industry has so many levels of it, and there's so much many people employed. It's crazy. And that all came to a halt. That all froze, you know. Yeah. So that's part of what the event coalition, Terry Horton here from the um, Hawaii Convention Center, yeah. joined with us along with the, the Hawaii Visitors Bureau, John Rees, and everybody got together and we took that pl- a COVID safe plan to the mayor's office. We said, hey, here's how we can do it. We can reopen these events if we do, you know, the venues already got into it. And that was key to have like the convention center come up with their safety sanitation programs, which just about every hotel has now. Yeah. Every venue has... Blaisdell is working on it now with the Waikiki Shell. You know, the Aloha Stadium is doing it. So it's starting to open up. But at the time, man, it was dire. You know, and it still is. 
Because now, with with unfortunately the governor delaying this, yeah, you know, we're because he's so stoic. <laughs> is that the word? <laughs> that should be the word. That should have been the word of the day. <laughs> but, you know, it's he, not maybe a he's a groupie. He's not a groupie. Yeah. <laughs> hey. There you, is. You pitched this plan to two mayors, mm-hmm. right? The first mayor, also uh, stoic, also <laughs> not so much. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, he was. I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt because he was making this up as he went. I mean, he just no one knew what to do, and, and you know, he could have looked across to other cities and states, and maybe we didn't do that. But you know, they came up with their own plans here, and they did what they did. And you know, in, in hindsight, you know, there are a lot of mistakes. But um, two mayors, two different opinions. You know, one I, I think Blangiardi is uh, the people we've talked to. He said he's a little more business centric. Like yep. he yep. he's thinking from the business owner mindset. Um, which I think puts you in a good position, right? Yeah, much better. And and he did. He lended. He he, he uh, has been very very helpful and very very assisting with what we're doing, which is great. Yeah. So so when when do you get the green light? What's how, how much can you do now? How much progress have you made? Forty four percent need to get vaccinated. I think according to your own website, yeah. There's the answer. We we have a on, on the Hawaii Event Coalition website. We have the the which links to. The I state saw that data you got the state the, data, right? Yep, and then the data which um, is needed for large events to open without um, restrictions. Yeah, I think forty four percent. That's the current numbers. No, it's it's about at fifty two percent right now. So what what is that? What are you looking how at? How many that? how many people more need to get oh, vaccinated? Oh, more. I okay, think. I didn't I didn't look at that. But chart. They, they you know the governor the stoic governor not a groupie. Just announced the, uh, on Monday. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> second. <laughs> just announced on Monday that so we're at about fifty-two percent fully vaccinated right. statewide. Once the state hits sixty percent, then they're going to go to like a tier four, and then once right. the state hits seventy percent, which the original projections were about August, but now they've realized uh, the vaccination uh, rate has gone down so significantly over the last few weeks right. that now they're projecting possibly mid-October. But once that seventy percent threshold is hit, then everything gets terminated and essentially everything goes back to normal once we hit 70%. So is right. that is that the goal though because I mean that's that is a very far away goalpost. I mean it, it particularly if you look at how quickly those numbers of people getting vaccinated per day are diminishing. Um I'd hate to think that we're waiting for 70% before we can That's where we are. I mean if you look at what they're saying and it, because it was it wasn't achievable. It seemed attainable but then once the uh like, like we were talking earlier, 30,000 were getting vaccinated a day. It's dropped down to three, about 10%. So yeah. that, it, you know, you're getting ran right up to the 20 yard line and now you just, now you're, they just stop you're crawling. It's yeah. not, doesn't look That's a football so reference, yeah. Maleko. Is that what that is? <laughs> Get Rich Miano oh, on the phone. It's an oval shaped leather ball. <laughs> they play it at Aloha Stadium sometimes. Uh, by the way, just reminding you, we do have questions up uh, and open for you on the website. Feel free to chime in uh, if, you, if you have a, a question about a specific uh, event or a rule. Uh, but there were some relaxed rules that were allowed. Uh, you did make some progress. I, there are conventions happening. Uh, Flash was just telling me there was an event up here, a breakfast that happened a little while ago that had the prayer breakfast. How many people? End of May. 1,200 people. 1,200 people? On the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. Ab- abs- and, and one, one of the great things, and Terry Horton here, the head of the Hawaii Convention, great job. With her coordination with the Hawaii Event Coalition, taking the uh, Hawaii Visitors Bureau people and taking that presentation to the mayor is kind of what did it because we were al- out allowed to open up that that side of it because, again, structured events where they have the screening, they have the venue in on it, the vendors are all in on it, we're able to open up in a COVID-safe manner for MCI meetings because when you really think about it, most of those meetings are people either coming in from the mainland so they've been tested before they came in and with, with the venue screening and with the, the COVID safe planning, again, structured event, you're a, we were able to do it, which was absolutely amazing. And I got to hand it to, to John, to Terry, and to these other people who all assisted in that. You couldn't have done it without him. And the mayor. By you know. the way, thank God we're in Hawaii where you can do outdoor events essentially year <laughs> round. Year round. <laughs> yeah. If we were yeah. in like New York right now and they're like, sure, yeah. you can do an event outdoors, it's like, great. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> The Minnesota people are looking at me going, I hate you. I hate you. We do have a lot of opportunities with because we have a lot of outdoor spaces here. Um, I, at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of outdoor space that isn't being used as, as a venue, that isn't properly being used or could be used better uh, for live events. Um, you know, we have very few outdoor bars and restaurants for a place that it, it's summer almost year-round. Um, we have very few outdoor concert venues 
Um, yep. You know, uh, we do weddings at, in, in, you know, private property parks, you know, and, and mansion houses. I mean, there's, there's so much more that could be done here. Um, I feel like we, we don't take advantage of that enough. Yeah, you're not kidding. I mean, some of the greatest outdoor events, it's with the stadium being in the state it is right now, that's kind of a bummer because yeah. the, the with the stands being shut down upstairs, the shell is just reopening, so that's that's becoming viable, but they're just, just slowly eking into that with the symphony series right now. So, and, In fact, today is uh, June 9th, I think, right? Yeah. So BAMP Project just this morning announced a, a comedian Jim Gaffigan at the oh. Waikiki Shell. And that's that's going to be the first big outdoor event at the Shell and the first big concert, as far as I know. And that's going to be July, uh, I think, 31st or 30th or something. You'd have to check their website, bantproject.com. But that's a fantastic sign. You know, this morning they're they're announcing a, a Shell show. And uh, I'm I that's sh- awesome. That's awesome. I think well, how do you social distance uh, at the shell? I mean, is well, that it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, just, it's an eight, it's an 8000 cap room and they're going to make it a, a, they're going to have seating for 2300 people in an 8000, you know, yeah. 8000 seat space and just spread Draw every, some, spread spray everybody paint out. some yeah, lines spray on paint the some lines on the yeah, ground. Yeah, just, the groupies are over in this section. Yay! 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 Hey. Also, also, how long have you been have you have you been uh, Backstage at events. Oh my God! It started in. Late, I don't even want to say. You remember it your was, first concert? It was when oh, Bob Harmon looked young. My first con- <laughs> 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 oh, man. I got. I got He's on watching Journey. This. You're dead. When Journey <laughs> came in and was it '83? And they had when five Steve concerts. Perry was singing. They had five concerts in a row, mm-hmm. and I, I'd my prior experience had been that had been shining a light in an elephant's backside for the circus. So I went from my first spotlight experience. Which was on a circus, right? Shining okay, so sounds you, like an or, elephant. Have you ever seen the one where they sweep up the spotlight? I was one of those spotlights, right, where the clown sweeps it up. Really? Well, that was me. That's hilarious. That's yeah. funny. I you love that. A lot of you are probably familiar That's a good with stick. my work. And I, don't, I, you know, do. I do. Oh, I've, been a, cool? I've been a fan of yours yeah. for years. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had an itch, and I looked behind me one time, unfortunately, and then ran that spotlight up into the crowd, and the oh, monkey boy. just... <laughs> ran across people and that, that was it's the last like a time cat following the laser pointer <laughs> yeah the same, that was same the last thing. time they let me run a spotlight the circus <laughs> so but then then right after that i went into went into um journey my next show was journey believe it or not run a spotlight wow and that was crazy because i got steve perry and i didn't realize i thought wow i'm honored to do this and the older guys are laughing because they're like oh he's a pain in the ass that's why because he keeps running oh so you, you keep moving you gotta, the you gotta work so oh. i thought it was a privilege and i no, realized you were getting that, oh, hazed you want the drummer <laughs> You ever run a spotlight? <laughs> you want to get the drummer, right? Because then you basically block the spotlight, tie it off, it, and then sleep until out. somebody kicks you and say hey, it's over, right? Pretty, pretty much same pretty with funny. the bassist as well. Yeah. <laughs> bassist That's is just funny. the next best thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, that reminds me of the joke, the bass solo, right? Where the <laughs> it's a bad joke. I want to yeah. hear it. Well, now you, you got you you to tell, yeah, yeah. tell us. <sighs> I blew the point. Okay, okay. Guy, guy lands in a desert island and hears these drums from the next village, and he goes, "What's up?" with the drums he says drums must play and he doesn't get it and just goes on for another night he says well i'm really great keeps going on every time he asks me he says drums must play so drums must play but the, okay I'm, I'm i'm insane what's going on here drums must play why he says because when drums stop bass solo <laughs> <laughs> i like it that's such an industry joke it is is people home so half the people get it now i got a lot of bass players going i hate <laughs> next time I they see know this though. Gonna punch they know. Me. Hey, you, you you mentioned drummers in the same <laughs> the same breath as real musicians. Oh, so you know no. you're, you're you're doing well. Oh, how dare you? You're doing well. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's ask the question. Since we're talking about this, what what's what's um I don't know in no particular order, like three or five of the favorite shows you've ever seen that you worked. Uh, I, I, and I tell you, George Michael was a lot of fun. We did George Michael at the, nice. the Blaze Arena, and he was just amazing. That was great, great fun show. Um, I really liked In Excess. They were yeah, really, I was really there. powerful. As a wonderful. teenager, sir. Yeah. As a teenager. There you go, man. Wow. I, I dragged my dad to yeah. that show. Was that 87, <laughs> my I think? Dad. <laughs> yeah, my dad did not know what the hell was going on. He was yeah. not happy. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, where's Jimi Hendrix? This is horrible. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was that was a wonderful, wonderful show. I really liked In Excess. And then the Journey, the early Journey shows were really fun. You know, a lot of the Shell shows, old Shell shows, where we did groups like AHA and uh, Belinda Carlisle and... So many groups have come through that you don't you don't think about or remember, but fun, fun, fun shows. There were a lot of. Uh, it seemed like there were a lot more shows 
in the 80s and 90s. Oh, you're not kidding. Then recently. Is kidding. that Ken Rosine and um, Ken Rosine, obviously Tom. Greg Monday. The Greg old Monday, stadium. that was the other one. Do you remember yeah. the old yeah. stadium shows where they would do, oh, the, my, what was the worst disaster ever? They had, I think it was um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and then they had Run DMC, and then they had ZZ Top. <laughs> I and remember so the ZZ Top show. Run DMC yeah. was right in the middle of those two. And that, so, oh, it, I've just never seen so many. It was, it was like a riot. It was like a concert. It was like a fight with a concert on the <laughs> side. So that was pretty bizarre. Just that cat, that group of people together, I don't think was a, the best no, idea. No, the I'm, fact I'm, that those stadium shows are, are a thing of the past now, that that stadium is, is going to sit there derelict yeah. for 10 years. I don't know. How long is it taking to build rail? You know, how lo- that's how long it t- double that is going to be how long. About the same time COVID will be over. <laughs> about take to build oh, a new stadium. Oh, oh, don't say that. My God, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> so wait a minute. So uh, so you've made some progress in, in terms of, of getting the mayor to, to, to hear you. But Flash is telling me that you've got promoters already announcing concerts. Are they predicting a 70% or are they just going to, you're just going to social distance people and, and pray that uh, that this thing goes away and we don't you know we don't catch a variant or something or whatever. Yeah, that, that's it is, you a know? hard one, and that's the, on the predictive side because we've got a lot of industrial shows that we've been waiting to open up, and and you know with that with that sliding, you know, most other states are open. I'm going to tell you, and that's that's. I have friends in in Texas who are go. Oh, I went and saw this great concert the other night, and I just I get mm, I bite my lip and go really <laughs> great, good. I'm so happy for you. But so that yeah. that actually leads. Directly that's the weird thing, right? Because it's like, why is it why are they safe there and we're not here? You know, what's it, it is what it is. But for the concert promoter, that leads directly to I'm trying to book acts now and yep. they're all already yep. out on tour. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they're and uh, they're not routing through. No one's going to Asia right now. Right. The only routing through right. where you're going to get a band is tour from Australia right now, which thank God is wide open. But most artists that you want to get Hawaii, it's already too late. Yep. They're off True. gallivanting all over the country. So. Smart promoters, maybe like the ones whose name rhymes with schmap, um, have, <laughs> have, 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 have has essentially pre-booked people and booked them far enough out to sort of... Where they're just kind of hoping... To address that problem yeah. because it, it was very clear that the rest of the country was going to open up first, and then you're playing this game of musical chairs with both venues and promoters right. you know, nationwide. Right. And that's the trouble with being in Hawaii is it costs so much to get a band here unless they're routing through or yep. coming for another show. One of these private shows we talked about. Even before, then it's expensive. Um, yep. it, it gets cost prohibitive to the point where the tickets are too expensive for anybody yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to do the bus and truck tour and you're not going to see the level of production that they have in the mainland. Yeah. We do very well. I mean, between the, the companies that are out here and the handful of companies and I'm going to. It also, shout out to Theatrics, who's been a part of this. Yeah. Bob Hammond from Eggshell Lighting Us. But we'll collaborate. I mean, when, when they did the um, Guns N' Roses and the Eagles, that was a collaboration of a bunch of us getting together mm-hmm. and combining all our equipment. And that was world class. When you saw that, that was the same production yeah. level that they're doing in or in the United States. So that great show. Really fun. If you saw Guns N' Roses, really long set. Incredible. Amazing fun. Yeah. You know, just just. I, I admit, I was not a Guns N' Roses fan their first round. How dare you? know, you? I wasn't. My, my <laughs> wife was. Lauren was. Lauren is a huge Guns N' Roses fan. Yeah, because she's cool. Yeah, she's way cooler <laughs> than I am. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't really. But when I went to see them live, I was like, you know, that's, there's a reason this band is, is one of the biggest bands in the world. You know, I mean, even at however old they are. I mean, Flash, you're still older than they are, but... Yeah. You know, whatever age they are now, they were still crushing it. it was even, still fun. even Axl Rose has more hair than me. Uh, he does. He paid a lot for it. Though, but, you know, any band that you see live, even if they're not your favorite artist, I say this about live music all it's the true. time. You, you yeah. could go to an artist, you you may have actually heard some of their songs and, and, and go, they suck. And it's then true. you go and you see them live, and you're like, oh, my God, these guys are amazing. There's, We've talked about this before. Yeah, there's yeah, something yeah, about yeah, a live show specifically you cannot replicate, replicate yeah. in any other scenario or situation, and the production is yeah. a huge part of that. But also, these guys are professionals that have been touring and playing forever, and they're just really good at what they do. But you, yep. and, and you're definitely not going to get that over a live stream. No, no hundred. Not. That's there's nothing like going in with all of your friends and mm-hmm. being there and finding, waiting in the beer line and bumping into some <laughs> people. <Fighting> yeah. <laughs> 
You know, I'm about out of drink here. Uh, what do you say we, we check back in with our with our bartender Yay. and see how things are going? Helene, hello. Hello again. Ready for your next cocktail? I think so. I, can I just have 27 more of these, please? Sure you can. <laughs> it's so refreshing. It's Isn't so it? refreshing. I mean, this really. I'm going to try I a new refreshing drink, like an iced coffee. How's yeah. that? Wow. Oh. So we're going to do like a boozy coffee. It's yes. called a flat white, white Russian made with Kahlua, vodka, some fresh espresso that we had brewed at our 18, uh, 808 Cafe here on premise. So I'll just uh, get that working for you all. Very nice. I love this. All right, Helene's going to make us some coffee drinks. I'm not yeah. mad about that at all. You wouldn't think of the convention center having necessarily fantastic cocktails, and yet here we are. <laughs> this drink is... I'm pretty positive she's she's bamboozling us and there's no alcohol in it <laughs> very it, tasty oh, it just, it. It just tastes vodka. like a hawaiian that's sun vodka. orange passion it's so good the watcher vodka. she's she's dealing it right now it's there i, I didn't realize they had their went in the hawaii convention center visit the fabulous 808 cafe where never, is that i, yeah, I, I, I never been it's to downstairs that. um in, in that main lobby the main lobby area Con- concourse thing that, that giant sort of I'll tell you, we, um, you know, uh, Malie uh, and, and I, we, we produce our, uh, our Le Dini en Blanc event, and we yeah. did it here Malia, one year. is he saying that even close to right? <laughs> Le Dini en Blanc. <laughs> Your I tried. I screwed, I screwed up every time. <laughs> <laughs> he, must, he must have done uh, w- uh-huh. one of those, uh, those, those French... Uh, I think it's the Pepe Le Pew. School <laughs> switch program. The Rosetta Le Stone? <laughs> I did a Rosetta Stone, just so I could say that. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we used to... We, we used to do it before COVID, uh, but we did one here, and uh, it is a massive event to orchestrate. Yeah. It, it's uh, 2,000 people who bring their own everything, yeah. their own personal setup, and then we provide all the, the, essentially the back line for all of it. But the convention center was the most organized and structured event we ever had <laughs> because our catering was on point. Why did you wait yeah. till Terry left to say that? <laughs> Hopefully she's watching the stream. I love to hear that. Yeah, that's like it kudos was. to the, their people. The catering was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. The, the beverage service was incredible. Like everything about that event, people still talk about. And, uh, and it, it, it just, it was one of those things where this place is meant for that. But to Kalani's point, when you're talking about people's safety and people that run and execute events for a living, yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. no better people set up and designed to take care of COVID protocols yeah. and, and, and whatnot than people in the event business. It's just what they do. Yeah. I don't think that can be said loud enough or clear enough. Like, that should be the Hawaii Events Coalition tagline, <laughs> mission statement. I read the mission statement on the website. It's really well written. But really, it should be, we do this shit for a living. That's like, a that great, should be. Yeah. Also, <laughs> if you need an MC, hire Maleko or Flash. Yeah, either one. Maleko mostly. But yeah. Flash, you know, if I'm not available. Yeah. <laughs> MC is not so much. Lighting guys. Are, we're, good, we're, good with, we're good with lighting. <laughs> Can I just be a groupie? Then? Wow. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> MCs are the worst. That, and you look smashing in white. I got to tell you, if, you, if you've gone to the dinner in Blanc, yeah, because it looks, him white wearing looks this, slimming like, on know, him. That's why. Oh, my God. That's, that's yeah, why. It, it looks so. slimming. It's a strange thing. Ricardo Montalban stands aside. It's like he's there and, the, you know, I want to run up and go, the plane. You got to wear your Cuba Vettas. That's it's the whole thing. It, it really. makes, makes a big difference. <laughs> I, I miss, we, me and Malia were just talking. I miss that event so much. Yeah. Because we do too. We, our friends would go, and my wife, and their. Kalani, like, oh, you know no. what event I miss? Yeah, no. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Yeah. yeah. True story. True story. That one's coming back. It's coming back. It may not be uh, in a couple of months, but it'll it'll be soon. We'll bring it back, right, Malie? Yeah. So I told oh, these. Oh look my amazing. god! Look, look at this with the glassware. Yes. Oh my gosh! Get out of here, Helene! You're spoiling us. <laughs> hey, Lauren, can you see that? Wow. Look at the layers. What did you call this the one? Colors. Uh, Delicious, I think. Flat white Russian. Delicious. Flat white Russian. There you go. Wow. Crazy coffee drink. <laughs> oh, my God. Here's to I the all the groupies. It. Cheers to the groupies. That is spectacular. That looks spectacular. Yay. Yeah, I, I, I do have to a shout out to these guys, too, because my favorite veggie sandwich <laughs> is in this building. Because they do crew catering every once in a while, mm-hmm. and they, all, they will do a section for vegetarian. It's amazing. It's my out of anywhere in the state, and it's in the crew catering section. This building, these people do it. I, I love, love it. it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Actually, I just met um, one mm, of one of the chefs good. here. That is good. Uh, maybe Helene, you can help me with his name. I just met him. He he was work he was working with us at. 
Purvey Donuts. He was helping out at Purvey Donuts. He's helping these guys Not with their Nick kitchen. Not Nick or Breon. No. It's Rudy, I think. Say it again. Rudy uh, was my banquet manager here at the convention center. So Rudy, he's, I mean, there's not much going on here, right? So Rudy's like, he had some time off. So he went to go help Brian at the new Purvey stop in Kahala. And, you know, I wound up catching up with him. And he's like telling me all these massive events and all these thousands <laughs> yeah. of meals he's pushing out. And he's sitting there glazing a donut. He's like, and now I'm making donuts. He's like, and I like it. <laughs> but, you th- you um, think about the shows in this venue. Like we've done, we did... Um, uh, Duran Duran was in here, and we did Jet. Remember Duran, down, Duran, down, yeah. down, down, down. By the down, way, down. Duran Duran great. private show, then yeah. Bamp did the public yeah. show private at the show arena. Yep, yep, yep. Right. After that, came here. Yeah. A lot of confetti, those guys. Oh, real fun. <laughs> A lot of confetti. <laughs> <laughs> they were all very sweet, though. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, very sweet. I got to talk to them. Uh, we set up an interview at. Um, you set it up, I think. Yeah, yeah. In that, um, I set it up the, at the, the um, Ritz Carlton, the new Ritz. Oh, it was beautiful. Nice. They wow. put us up in a penthouse at the very top. Oh yeah, it was like a place. two story. Yeah, and, and all the interviews ah, we paraded place. them Gorgeous. through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You and Billy V had your stare down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to separate Wait, us. You can't put us in the room at the same time. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. who was <laughs> Sting? Sting was out here, and he did a yeah. private show. Funniest thing. So we're in Maui. We're at the Grand Wailea. Sings up there on stage. They're doing sound check. And somebody shouts from the beach, walking on the moon. And he looks over and he goes, doon, doon, doon. <laughs> and he started playing requests. Oh, People I on the beach it. just start yelling stuff. And he's oh just standing God. up there smiling. And he would play it. Air but guitar. Amazing, it. amazing stuff. He came through for that show. I think it was an Oracle show. Then he played the public show here mm-hmm. in Oahu. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And then um, another, he came over and did a private show. with. I think it was... Cisco on the Big Island. And then he kind of went out after the show and kind of walked out to a little lawn chair with, you know, the crew still loading out around him, and he just kind of zenned out. It was really like, wow, wow. cool, cool I moments. I tell you, of, of the hundreds of interviews I got to do at the radio station, uh, the, the time I spent with him in his dressing room wow. backstage at the Blaisdell yeah. was the scariest and most exciting <laughs> moment. Because he was naked in a pretzel shape. <laughs> And he said, no, join he just, me in my four-hour tantric well, situation as well, a groupie. It's, it's pretty much a lot of, hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> He's soft-spoken, right? You know, and he doesn't say too much. He says enough. He doesn't have to. He just says yeah. enough. And so he came in, you know, he smiled. He, he mumbled a few hellos and, uh, and wound up doing the interview. And it was such a casual, calm, relaxed. Like, by the end of it, I was in a zen state. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, this is great. And then he went on stage and crushed it. It was amazing. He's, he's definitely, of, of all the, like, biggest, big superstars that I've met and dealt with, he was, uh, like, just crazy nice. And I actually almost didn't want to meet him because the police are my favorite band of all time. All time. And I I'm like, I, I can't, because we all know you meet, these people and Never a bunch meet of them your are, idols. are dickheads. Yeah, oh, and I, I was just like, what if I meet him and he's just like, I like, I can't turn this opportunity down. But if he's a dick, it's just, it's gonna crush me. I know. And he was like even nicer than I could have hoped for. He was just so sweet, and he, yeah, he has this very sort of calm, gentle, quiet. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. The, just. There's something about. Yeah. His, like he, it, it extends beyond his physical yes. being. You know, there's an aura. So just, about the man. Yeah, just to be clear, we all apparently have a man crush on stage. <laughs> no surprise <laughs> there. Did, did you see their last, their, the, it was the end of their police tour, their last reunion oh, tour um, at Blaisdell here, Not right? only did I fly up to Seattle to see the first shows at the we Key Arena. It. I was there. Are I was kidding? there. Oh, my oh, God. I thought that was Couple you. Couple of groupies. <laughs> I thought that was you. We were groupies. <laughs> I flew. We went up to the Key Arena. I was going to say, we I saw, saw the, the first yeah. show. We saw the yes. last show. So I saw the first oh. two shows at the Key Arena with my <laughs> high school friends, and we were all just, like, losing it. And then I saw the last three shows at, at the at the Blaisdell here. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then oh, that wow. show you're talking about um, with Sting – Live Nation did the Sting show, and Bamp had Ron White at the at the at Hawaii Theater or at the concert hall. Oh, same night. The same night. So I told Maddie, I'm like, listen, I know that I'm working, but and Maddie <laughs> obviously knows that like Sting is you my guy. Big, yeah, and he's yeah, like, okay. yeah, just go. And then uh, um, Eric from Live Nation met me backstage, and, oh, and we man. actually I went with Ron White's wife. Because she was a huge Sting oh fan, too. God, so we're like, classic. bye, Ron White. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> and Maddie's like, I got it. Don't worry. And then we, we got to uh, watch side stage of, of that solo show with Sting. for, And I was like, I did not want to go back to work. Uh, uh, 
the leaving a show to do another show you want to see better. I've done that. Yeah. Done that. yeah. We, were, we were doing a show in San Francisco. Is that but, but hold on. Yet? By the way, Ron White is fantastic and super funny and nice and all that stuff yeah, too. Yeah. But it's just like, come on, it sting. It's true. Yeah. I love his um, wing, uh, lug nut story about the way they don't put the lug nuts on his van tire and the, the tire falls off. You're talking about Ron White, right? Ron White, not, yeah. sti- not Sting's no, lug Ron nut White, story. Ron White, yeah. <laughs> And Ron White goes back and says, what the hell, man? Did he miss lug nut day? What, you know, where's yeah, yeah. this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was in San Francisco, and I, I, it was Rolling Stones, Voodoo Lounge. We, we, uh, I got I out, love of, I got out of that space. I got awesome. out of a show we were doing to go see the Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge tour. Wow. That's Amazing. awesome. Super good. Super good tour. That's incredible. You know, you, you, you get access to these massive bands. You have, uh, you know, direct contact with some of these, these bands that are essentially music idols to so many people. Do you get um, desensitized? I don't really talk to them, you know. I'm not that guy. I mean, I, He's I not allowed to. You're no not going to, contact. No you're not going to take selfies. No one looks at Mariah Carey. But you're so easy going. <laughs> you know, yeah. like... I mean, but yeah. you're so easy going. Like you're so chill. It's like it, if it's like, people come up and talk to me or ask me something, I'm all good. But I'm not, I, I just never been the autograph guy. I never, you know mm. what I mean. I, I mean, I'm always respect. Yeah, I've just done a lot of it. So you're like, hey man, I'm yeah. Gonna okay, do but thing. having said that, what what <laughs> is the celebrity, you know, that you worked with that you got the most goofy around? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I want to talk about Belinda Carlisle at the White Castle. Hey. I remember I was saying that was one of my favorite shows. That was when that she was, was in her prime in the 80s. That was really good. Yeah. yeah. We were doing a thing with Katy Perry, a private show on the Big Island. She, she, that got kind of... Yeah? Really, yeah. She'd be she friendly? Was, she was. And then and she come right into the, the crew tent, hung out with everybody, and on stage got a little weird because she was... She, the group had no kids in the audience. She's saying, "Oh, where, where's your kid?" And they're, oh, they're all. Oh, I bet he would love like if I came over to babysit. How old is he? Thirteen? Oh yeah, he'd like it. If I, and she was just be, she was oh, saying all this. I yeah, love it. Yeah, to the crowd, it got really yeah, a little awkward. Fun, fun. See, no, I'm gonna say fun. fun. I'm gonna say fun. Fun. Let's yeah. say fun. But a woman could say that. It's yeah. true. If it was a guy yeah. saying, if you said that, that, if that was, flash, if you well, said if you I wanted to go it, babysit, no. No. no, that would that would be instant handcuffs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Restraining order oh, immediately. <laughs> the bad mood rising. What, what's his name? Because he came. John up, Fogarty. Er, yeah, John Fogarty came up. We were doing a show, a, a private show, the, and he came up and just started talking to us, like, you know, "Hey, man, oh, ZZ Top, ZZ Top." Because uh-huh. we with the Grand Wiley, another private show with ZZ Top, and he comes over. Gibbons comes over and he fills up Billy his, Gibbons, his, lead which, singer, which is like a glass, like it's like a wine glass. It wasn't a soup glass, but he fills it with soup. And we're kind of watching. He comes, sits right with us, and says, "Hey, what do you boys do around here for fun?" And then he just starts putting Tabasco in it, like there was no time. In his, in his wine my glass language. of soup, glass. yeah. And he Speak just kept my putting Tabasco in it, putting Tabasco. In it. <laughs> if if you're a fan of ZZ like, Top or just a fan of music, have you seen the the Netflix documentary on them? No, it's I gotta watch. unbelievable. Oh, I didn't. It's, I haven't seen it. It's unbelievable. My dad was a huge ZZ Top fan. My so dad growing too. up, yeah. growing up, yeah. like it, it was, we were all about ZZ Top yeah. in in the house. Yeah, but it's just as a fan of music, it's just interesting. To see that you know that yeah. their story and how they came together yeah. and how they stayed I think together. When they and came all that. here, I was too young, but Carlos yeah. Coa, he was yeah. old enough. He went to ZZ Top. What yeah. was that? About eighty five at the stadium, eighty five ish. Yeah, that was the yeah. stadium. They came again because that was a private show, and that was like in the ninety early nineties, I think. Oh, okay. I remember because we the Mo, the road manager, and a bunch of us went over. We set it up one night, then we went over to. Uh, what was the Dixie Grill? I think it was, and we got just whoa! It was a great night. Everybody just hung out, and it got, I got I remember getting in trouble with my current girlfriend. She's like, "What the hell happened?" Because people took pictures, and you're like, "God damn it!" And you're like, "I was hanging out with ZZ Top." <laughs> like what? <laughs> Hall pass? What do you? Whatever happened didn't happen. I also, was, if you've been with your girlfriend that long, I think no, it's common no, no, law no, marriage no, not at with this her point. Anymore. Not with oh, her. oh! oh. Well, she wasn't Elizabeth. cool. She didn't get it, man. She wasn't a groupie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Even you're, even you're laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's easy top great one, and, and having that interaction with them walking right up to us, you know, yeah, that was fun. Just That's pretty cool. With us. Yeah, yeah. There are certain, um, there are certain bands where you think, you know, they, they gotta be fun to hang out with. They gotta be cool. And likewise, there's also certain rock stars where you think, I bet that guy's a jerk. 
I bet that guy. Yeah, but then there's the flip side where you go, I think he he looks pretty cool, and then you're like, wow, he's a real asshole. Yeah, I met yeah. a few of those at the wave. <laughs> actually, I kind of don't want to talk about those. You don't people. need to talk about. Yeah, that. you don't need to name names, but can you some guy. name some names? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to name names, but you know, drop some hints or yeah, something. <clears throat> Maybe hum a song. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. All Can't right. Do it. All Can't right. Do it. That's yeah. fine. That's well, fine. Fosh, how about people. you? You met enough stars. Who's the one star that you, you worked with where it was just like, this is the most difficult show I've, uh, I've ever I mean, like, Kal- like Kalani, I deal with, like, tour managers, publicists, marketing yeah. people, and publicists are the worst. For sure. I love you, Erica. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I deal with all the people whose job it is to buffer the artist from that. So then if I'm ever dealing with an artist, typically they're going to be super nice because they can yep. be totally amazing and awesome to my face. And then behind my back go like, get rid of that flash guy. Like he's a dick oh, or fire him no. or whatever. But, no. but face to face, most artists now have it designed to where they always get to be the nice guy. They don't, they don't have, oh, that to. makes sense. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they send their people to, right. to, to be the asshole. I need people. You need people. Yeah. I need people. I'd but be now, much nicer if but I didn't now have if to you ask people. Like, like Phil from BAMP, who's dealing with the agents who are a lot closer tied to what the art, they're like the voice of the artist, <laughs> right? That's a, sort of a different story. So like Kalani, I don't really have to deal with, I dealt with lots of asshole tour managers for sure, but that's also yeah, part of their job is yeah. to be that guy. <laughs> I, have, oh, yeah. I have tour managers who people think are just the devil. And if we do the right thing, they uh, get along with them fine. They'll say, man, that's a great guy. And I walk in the back hallway and they're screaming at somebody. And you're just, yeah. <laughs> I always think of Spinal Tap where the manager has the stick right off the, <laughs> the cricket bat. You yeah, know? yeah. That, That's absolutely true. But also you really, meet guys like that and they're just a terror. Don't you you're think like, oh that I, I would think of any job job in the event is well in the concert space the job i would want least is is tour manager yeah. i think it's the most thankless horrible you basically ha- your entire job is to be an asshole <laughs> and, and is oh, to make gonna, sure that everything is, gonna, is done correctly i'm gonna say that yeah that make sure everything is done correctly i'm not gonna say yeah that. <laughs> but yeah it's, I, a, gonna, it's a thankless job for sure all right, I'm looking here. There were there were comments that were coming in, and I guess I didn't pay attention. I uh, feel like Danny Klassler is going to have a, have a lot of no. uh, a lot of things to say today if he's watching. So here we go. I'm sorry. I, uh, I apologize for not getting to you guys quick enough. Angela Nash. Uh, she said, "In excess, relic." Oh, in excess. Yes, Angela. I'm uh, with you. Yeah. Uh, you got it, she still wants to go back to Danielle Blanc. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Okay. So Good. back to the topic at hand. Uh, Brian Park. Uh, C Art says, how "Oh, we- Brian! Shout out to Brian! Yeah, he manages a lot of local bands." He says, "How do we remove pandemic restrictions? Do you actually mean uh, have shows and promoting them safely?" Well, I mean, the governor just said on Monday, Brian, that once the state reaches seventy percent vax rate, everything goes away. So that I mean, they are saying, "Here's the answer." Yeah. Now you just but need to go and convince people to get that's, vaccinated. That's pie in the sky. To. Like, I appreciate the number. It's not pie in the sky. But, that but by with, the latest, with, it's going to be in October. But that's so far away. It's like we were promised July 4th. You know, like that was the goal. Let's get this done by There's the summer. There's a goal. A goal is not the same as a promise yeah, all for right. starters. All right. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Uh, <laughs> now, Scott Miskovich, I'm going to tell you who, who's with the Hawaii Health, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has the antigen test, which now they're, they're trying to push through. And we were talking about it earlier. So you can, for 20 bucks, you can come in and take an instant test. You spit. It's not. And it'll tell you if you're positive or not. So that has the potential to bring in full 100% of capacity concerts because everyone going in either has been vaccinated or has been tested. So in other words, if if you don't want to get vaccinated, here's this other option. So there is an option that we're going down that road now and we've did the events coalition and some of the local promoters have been meeting with him and it's very promising. They're doing it in the Staples Center. He's been doing it. He, you know, we we had the opportunity to talk to him. So there are avenues where we can get open again. Unfortunately, there's a price tag to that. But, you know. But at 20 bucks a pot, what's that? Oh, that's right. Uh, 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 oh, Lauren Iolani brings up a good point. That? Iolani School, they had in-person graduation, yep. no social distancing. Everybody was there. They were wearing masks sometimes. But yep. they all, they te- everyone who went tested at the, wow. at the event, yep. Yep. and everyone tested negative. Yep. And then they, they, that capped off an entire year wow. with no COVID at the school wow. on campus. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely Take that, Punahou. Yep. You know, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Throw that out there, I guess. So, uh, uh, Brian yeah. had a few other comments here. I'm sure uh, he did. Yeah. But, you know, another thing to Brian's <laughs> point, and I know that, that they've talked about, and, and I know BAMP has talked about this, is, you know, what, what you've got COVID rapid testing on site. You've got, you know, a, va- a vax pop-up on site. Yeah. So right yeah. there before you walk in the door, here is, here's the solution. You know, right there. Besides, obviously, the temp yeah. checks and all that kind of good stuff. And if you test positive, you're out. You test yeah. negative, yeah. Yeah, come, come party. That's it, right? Yeah. A cool. little, bit, little bit of an issue because if you do test positive and you're standing in that line, you mm. now have a medical event. That's right. true. So now that, everyone there is exposed. Yeah. How many people are yeah, up there that have three, to six feet and all. be yeah. a little careful with that? So that's, well, that's there's the, a way to figure that out. You know, is, you, you, is, you, yeah. you you social distance the line. You know, you yeah. put them in queues and yep. and uh, and quarantine pods. You know, you know, I've dealt with medical issues and contact tracing my whole life, Kalani. I don't think it's really that much of a problem. <laughs> I'm is a this, professional. Is this where we say groupie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got about five minutes left in the show here. I'm going to just write off uh, both of Brian's questions here real quick. He asked uh, if you worked a private Alicia Keys show a couple years ago. Well, that's very specific. Yeah. Very specific. We, we have, and there's a future private show with us. Uh, there you go, Brian. So yes, the answer is yes. Write your love note now. Yep. Um, and then, uh, yeah, easy Wonderful stalker, concert. Brian. And, Wonderful then, concert. and then he said, uh, <laughs> oh, I guess we were talking about, uh, managers and stuff and promoters. He said, that's me. Protect the artists and be the jerk. He used a different word, but I want that's, you that's not true. Brian is very sweet to, to the, to the bookers, to people like me that are booking his clients. He's, to your he, face. He's, he's, what he says to me in DMs <laughs> about true. you. Totally very different. True. But Brian is, is sweet and nice to everyone. So shout out to Brian. Well, who does he represent? What, uh. He's got Yoza. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got, uh, oh, God, Dustin Park. Um, he's got a bunch of people. I'm just drawing a blank right now because you put me on the spot. But, I mean, he's got like <laughs> a dozen artists. Nice. Ui, Ui Lei Young, I think, is her last name. Yeah, okay. he's, he's got a bunch of people. Nice, nice. Well, he does a good job then. Clearly, he clearly, uh, he's not I hitting know. you up for shows, though. No, he did. I, I, I use this artist all the time. He's awesome. Okay. He's awesome. awesome. He's super sweet. <laughs> Flashes awkwardly in the moment here. <laughs> Groupie! <laughs> I don't. Yeah. As soon as I get off the air, Brian, Walk I'm gonna remember all your artists. Right. I'm so sorry. He's he's one of he's one of five people that are commenting right now. So you know, don't insult the guy. <laughs> I love it. I'm not insulting him. So here here we are. We're we're at uh, <clears throat> June 9th. You know, we're less than a month away from the president's deadline of everyone everyone vaccinated. Um, Today, it, the, uh, the first Shell concert just been announced, end yeah. of July. That's so we're it's getting signed. The, the wheels are turning. Things are happening. Um, you have uh, the, the Events Coalition came up with this COVID safety plan. If somebody wasn't at these meetings, if somebody's just late to the party here, they're a wedding planner, they're uh, a concert promoter who just moved here, you know, what, where do you get this information? And Check out the website because okay. all the programs we recommend, including the John Hopkins contact tracing, including the um, all the apps we recommend are all on there. So if you go to the safety committee under my uh, – I ended up being the safety guy just because I yell at people, don't do that, stupid. So then they... See, he's like a tour how, manager. That's how I got, voted, I got voted the safety guy because I yell more at people. And they, but I think that's how it happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go go to the website and it, all that information's in there. It so it's Hawaii Events it. Coalition. Yeah, Hawaii Events Coalition dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and if you uh, if if you if are you having meetings still or are you still? We are. Okay. We, we have steering committee meetings and then we have uh, general meetings where everybody gets online. Still doing it via Zoom. We did we did a giant live one here, and it looks like we might be trying to do another big live one here coming up. So fantastic. Get online, check it out. So Kalani, when things open back up, do you guys go back to being enemies and, and fighting? <laughs> Fighting for the same piece of the pie. <laughs> Pretty much, right? <laughs> there was enough work out here where we kind of, everybody was so busy, it was good, you know, and yeah. I think it'll return to that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. That mortal enemy thing will come. Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii is so small. Here's the thing, man. If I dropped a crescent wrench in a ballroom in Kona, they'd hear about it in Kauai before it hit the ground. I mean, that's how <laughs> that small is, It's Hawaii. a tiny it's, town, man. Yeah, it really is. You're not kidding, man. It's yeah. It's like when funny. we hear about MC snafus or whatever oh it's just yeah like, oh yeah it's just it, it's oh, such yeah. a time you can't get away with anything yeah. in this used town to be. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well kalani rodriguez everybody thank you so much for coming and joining yeah, us on the show today guys, it, if, if i'm a if i am a business or a potential client and i want to i want to book uh 
you know, Hawaii stage for something, hopefully in the near future, how, how, do, how does someone go about hiring you guys? Oh, hslr.com. Go online and then, you know, talk, talk to us on the website or look us up, on, you know, check just, out the website and give us a call. Give me a broad range of what you're capable of doing. Oh, man. Everything. Every, every, yeah, we do, we do the smallest of shows, which will be like a small stage for a luau all the way up to Bruno Mars. Okay. You know, so we do roof systems. We do LED walls. We do lighting systems. We Like Lantern. If you've seen the Lantern floating, all that staging, all that lighting, that's, that's all yeah. us. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, we can build it in the water. We can build it in your backyard. We can build it over your, the dead. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can build it anywhere you want. I love it. I, I love it. Shouldn't. You know, that's okay. You're all right. All right. You made it. Kalani Rodriguez, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Hawaii Stage and Lighting. Uh, and, of course, we want to thank uh, the Hawaii Convention Center. Uh, Helene, thank you. For, thank you. for taking time out of your busy day to, to make some cocktails for us. They were delicious. Two home run cocktails. <laughs> Two Kudos. home run cocktails. Right. Top, so top good. Top. So good. Malie, our audience of one today. If yeah, you want to be our Malia. audience of one, I'm not kidding. Email me, flash at iheartmedia.com. We're gonna Looking get you at you, Angela. Audience, uh, audience Looking of one. at you. Yep. Um, and we're going to be back next week. Uh, we're going to be at the Blue Note once again. Uh, the Blue Note, of course, uh, one of the first venues to start bringing shows back. They are bringing uh, one of my favorite comedians. Um, really? He is going to be back. Uh, yeah, seriously. Wayne Brady is back in town. Okay. The guy is so smart. He's so fast. Um, his shows are, are probably the, the quickest, funniest shows you'll see. And he's going to be playing at the Blue Note. We're going to have a chance to talk to him yeah, we're actually briefly. We're, we're going to be interviewing Wayne Brady next Wednesday, uh, special time, twelve thirty p.m. next Wednesday, live from the main stage at Blue Note. This will be the second time that we're broadcasting uh, from the main stage mm-hmm. at, at Blue Note. Early show, twelve thirty next 12, week. Wednesday. Twelve thirty next week, and then we have a national touring comedian. Uh, What's his name? Graham Elwood is also going to be on the show uh, later on in June. And then in July, Mm -hmm. we're interviewing Jasper Wong, co-founder of Pow Wow Hawaii. He's got that big show, the Pow Wow Show, um, at the Bishop Museum. And we're actually going to be doing the show from the Pow Wow exhibit while the museum is open. And Jasper is going to be spray painting Flash's shirt. (laughs) <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Flash. While he's wearing it. Flash his Flash his shirt. Flash shirt. Flash shirt. Flash shirt. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the new Oahu golf apparel design <laughs> yeah. by and, Jasper. And by the way, we are also interviewing Tim from Oahu golf apparel in July, whose brother, Matty Boy, Fan Project, largest local concert company in the state, all Fan. tying in. We're going we're gonna to ask, uh, we're going to ask, uh, wow, that's we're going to ask about Kalani. We're going to ask Matty. What do you think of yeah, Kalani? Yeah. Well, he better say nice things. <laughs> he better say nice things. You know, these, these say, lights, lights nice fall from scaffolding. Him. It's <laughs> weird. Nice things Whoops. About him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching, and thank you for, for joining us here on Flash.com. Please hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. Let us know you were watching the show. We hope to see you on the show next time when we're back next Wednesday. By, by the way, it, we, we don't drink and drive on the show. We always do uh, Ride Holo Holo, the new local ride share company. Go to rideholoholo.com, download the app, the whole thing. Bye-bye.